vai que a calça vai que a gente um we're just waiting for Serene Penchi so um vai que a calça vai que a gente um oh okay she's here now see make it a screenshot me Benji's just joining us. Hope everyone's having fun on Bank Holiday. Hi. 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 How are you, Benji? I'm good, thank you, Marge. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, Marge. I'm good. I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Um, yeah, it's okay. It sounds a little bit distant, but it's okay, though. Okay, let me know if it cuts down and it needs a readjusting. Okay, just yeah. We're in India, so we're just doing an Indian, like, simple job, holding the phone, no fancy gadgets here. <laughs> no, Benji, you should see how my phone is standing. <laughs> it's standing, oh yeah, mine's no fancy gadgets either. It's on giant Jenga blocks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Something similar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For the two the Sangat, the Piari Piari Sangat, all our lovely friends and family, greater family from the UK. It's so nice to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Benji, I was thinking, um, obviously everyone, um, most people already know who you are. Everyone just loves you and so inspired by you. But um, on Musket, we've had quite a, like, um, a lot of new followers since the start of the live. So I thought it'd be nice to give like kind of like a background on you. Oh, and nice. then we can kind of go into like um, how you moved to Punjab. So just like just a really simple background, like how you got into Panasiki and just who you are. Oh, <laughs> nobody, nobody <else. laughs> I don't I suppose. Um, at the moment, I'm a mum of three, and uh, my oldest is 14, 14, too old to remember, and uh, the youngest is nine. I've got two boys and a gal. Um, I came into Sikhi, so I didn't come from an Amritari family that's, um, you know, that Sikhi of, Sikhi didn't get passed down per se, like um, I didn't get it from home or anything. And uh, so I was just your average uh, non Gursik Punjabi girl, British Punjabi, British Asian, growing up on the scene. Um, I always felt proud, to, which is a bit weird because I didn't hear much mm -hmm. about it. Then when I was uh, 16, I read a book, just happened to read a book in my GCSEs. I was out in the local library in Hounslow, London, and I came across a book um, called the Universal Message or something like that, and it had the brief history of all the Guru Sahibs from Gurudev Ji Maharaj up until um, up until present day contemporary history. So um, what was brilliant was that when I read about the Sahibs out there and the sacrifices and Mir Manu's jails, like even after Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj had left, I think that's what really killed me like oh my god there are people alive in this world that are so um if they don't get in depression they don't get um they don't lose their world or life. um when i started thinking about the states of mind that they managed to keep their faith intact even though they went through the most horrendous oppression mm -hmm. I think that really stayed with me when I was 16 and I mm. kind of ventured out into becoming Gursik. I was just in year 11 at the time. But um, because my father, he was not into um, practicing Gursik. He was, um, you know, the atmosphere at home was, you know, drinking and, you know, just a normal Punjabi mm -hmm. So, um I kind of like tried to get into it, but he was like, no, you can't give up um, uh, uh, um, egg, eating eggs and products like that. You're going to get too ill. You're going to get skinny and stuff. And then, um, so I didn't, I went the complete opposite way. So instead of going into Sikhi, I ended up going into um, your usual going out with your friends and clubbing and um, going on holidays and, you know, completely non gorsik And, um, but then Maharaj had it, must have had it written because... Mm -hmm. 18 I got into modeling and um, it was so weird the same time I got into modeling same time with, I met some Sangat and I remember the first thing I ever saw uh, because my mum used to go to the Gurdwara she was in touch with some of the Sevadars and they would say can you help out can you just serve chips and beans at our local kids camp so I'd be like yeah why not and um, 
the first thing I ever saw was Sukhmi Kaur Benji. So she was a Russian oh. and she was on like um, doing a gla gladiator duel with someone. It was hilarious, uh, taking on the Sings in full bana. And I was like, who's this? <laughs> I've never seen a Sikhni before. Oh. Not even a Punjabi born person. Huh? So that was quite crazy. Then I met a lot of other Norjwan. Um, a lot of sings and stuff by Jagrad Singh. I met them all that, that time. This was like 2001, end of 2001. And uh, by 2002, I, read, I started reading a book called In Search of the True Guru by Pai Rama Singh Ji. And it's such a beautiful book. And I think mm -hmm. that he had Darshan of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj and that connection. And I was like, wow, you can, you can still feel them. I know the qualities and the values of Sikhi ethos, but wow, you can still like connect with Guru Sahib, even though they left the earth 300 years ago. How is that possible? So to cut a long story short, within I think four months, I took Amrit. And um, that was only because by, by Rama Singh Ji said themselves, they were like, I think you're ready to take Amrit, right? And um, right. Maharaj Panal, um, even by Jagrad Singh was in that Amrit Sanchar, not taking Amrit himself, they had already taken Amrit at the time. It was Vasaki 2002, and um, they were translating for two Afro-Caribbeans who had uh, come to take Amrit oh, as well. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It's so amazing. Now look back to it. Yeah. And um, then that was it. That was the start of my journey. And it was so weird because I was thinking that how this whole journey from UK to Punjab, how did it all yeah. happen? Just before Mabush... Uh, asked us or suggested to us that would you like to come to um, India to do seva full time that hmm. same day I had um, two job offers and I was just about to finish my university degree as well which means that my mm -hmm. career, you know, career was about to start in a direction I wanted it to head and I was thinking wow obviously Maharaj wanted us to head this way I suppose and the choice was to come here and I was just remembering today I was like isn't it weird that when um my modeling career, I got called for a casting to do uh, Asian Woman and Bride uh, catwalk and a photo shoot. And mm. at the same time I was getting into Sikhi and my heart was uh, saying, oh, I don't want to shave my legs or I don't want to do this anymore. It just feels mm -hmm. so good. Time I was getting calls that you can progress your career in modeling and stuff. So I don't know. Obviously, you know, I chose which career I chose. <laughs> That's amazing. So that, that's it. And then obviously in 2004, I met, um, I got married to my husband, Guljeet Singh, who um, probably more of you know them than uh, me uh, because of their dedication to going around the world doing Prajan. Mm -hmm. It was in English, just so that people understand, because I think when both him and um, myself were getting into Sikhi, there was a lot less youth at that time. And for me, especially, the massive barrier was the language. And I'm like, mm -hmm. That much and I really relied on those translations and stuff <laughs> and, uh, with um, Singh Sahib he Maharaj Gepanal his, his parents taught him you know Guru Sikhi and then he took that forward himself that initiative to uh, share what he knew in a way that was uh, tangible or under easily understood by others so we got married in 2004 and then um, yeah, um, we went on to have kids and then partake in camps along with many other Sangata like yourselves. So many uh, Sangat helped in the camps. So many different Jathe Bandi were involved and that's how it should be. Another love should always be there. Mm -hmm. Since then, yeah, we were doing camps for a number of years and going to camps ourselves, learning, learning, learning. And then um, we started coming to India more regularly. First we got into the Sangat just before I got my and um then Holly Holly, Baba Ji, Singh Ji, Kali Wali. And uh, now we're at Gurdwara Sevawala side with the Saints over there. That's a very brief and faster journey. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. Um, so how, how would you say like it happened from going from the UK to Punjab? Like what made you take that decision or how did it happen? Um, well, I don't know how much uh, the listeners know about Punjab at the moment, but uh, mm -hmm. from when the, whenever the Mahabhus used to come to England and stuff, they'd always explain it. I think when you're in the Sangat, you kind of tend to know a lot anyway about what's happening in Punjab. So I don't know if you know, but Punjab is not in a good place, Hannah. Um, Punjab does need help. Or Sevadas on the ground. 
and uh, what Marpush was saying look Punjab is riddled with like drugs alcoholism cancer mm. water um crisis they say the water's going to run out in 20 years or so uh, malnutrition um corruption it's like the female infanticide and just the way they view females i mean if you think that india is the most uh, dangerous country in the world for females yeah you know, yeah the sikhs who stand up for human rights mm-hmm. you know protect female empowerment and stuff so what's actually happening on the ground on grassroots levels is yeah. so different from what maharaj envisioned and how punjab mm-hmm. would be free and prosper yeah and then and then the rest of the world so obviously marpush were explaining you know the kind of cases that come up to them it's really some really horrific stuff i mean um you know the drugs problem is huge over 70% of um punjab youth are addicted to drugs in a real is an epidemic mm-hmm. and you know what a couple of the cases they were saying is look benji we get um sometimes there's uh females come in like younger sisters of uh drug addicts and they'll come in here crying and sobbing so they don't feel safe enough to go home because mm. they're not sure their brother or their father was under intoxication from drugs or alcohol and they've been abused and so they come to the asthan and we're like my background is in counseling as well so mm. what it uh, we need more support on the ground we need, need more females as well for them to turn to but punjab on a whole so many different levels is not in a good place and So hearing all that it was uh, Marbush literally asked us would you be willing to come here mm. um, to save our full time there's projects to help the upcoming generations uh, there's uh, we want to make academies where the immigration is huge like every punjabi's aspiration is to get out mm. and yeah out. stuff like that everything is about yeah. the west and they think the west is where you know they'll meet all their needs Mm. Well, around we turned it we meet their needs at home so uh, like one of the um projects that we're working on is setting up an academy where they get a cambridge affiliated award um somewhere they can take all around the world that qualification that's recognized everywhere so that you know they spend so much money on ielts ielts that they call it here ielts and it's a english yeah. language kind of uh, program which means that once they've got that they can go to countries in the west and get a job in english but um what they often find is they end up going in so much debt uh before they've even stepped out of um the country you know but that's their only goal so what yeah. hang on you're sitting on treasure here yeah yeah treasure that's such this potential of this place i mean there's a reason why guru sahib came here and did yeah mm uh it's life. scary isn't it cuz everyone wants to leave punjab all these beautiful stands and all that save everything all the history of punjab uh, exactly and where will it end up yeah i mean now now we're in the lockdown it's ironic in a way because the lockdown happened and it's right near harvesting season and mm-hmm. you know, normally the biharis come the immigrants the laborers come from uh, bihar which is another state outside and usually they've got the habit of like um chewing barn which is like an intoxicant we don't normally mm-hmm. you know deal with that kind of stuff and um normally they would come and do the work the labor for the farmers and the families and because of the lockdown they couldn't make it so for the first time when jobbies were going to the youth who are so skinny they're so skinny because of the malnutrition yeah. and do yeah. they're on their phones most of the time so they they like been to do this for the first time they're not used to it Mm. just maharaj's way of kind of like you know reconnecting everyone like look yeah working by the sweat of your brow is actually bachan hai na jinni na kar nanak se mukh ujjal ke the chutti na in all ways whether it's your kamaing your sikhi whether it's um working hard and honestly I, uh, there was a couple um who came from um, america so inspiring they came and moved with their children here and even the singer and singer he both of them do organic farming and found really oh, wow. so it's just so inspiring so there it, there's a beginning of a movement it looks like that people yeah. are and um so going back to your question about how it happened for us i suppose me and marpush explained all this to us hmm. said, look this is the situation 
Punjab, we see it day in, day out. How, um, you know, how amazing would it be if a family, two families, 200 families, however many it takes, you know, decided to leave their comforts in UK or the West and okay. show the people you are worthy, the place is worthy, and mm. worth investing our lifetime in. And um, we were just like, oh my God, wow, what a strange timing, you know? Like, yeah. Just put out to us, and we'd just been in London for six months, singing, I'd got a yeah. job and stuff. Yeah. And there was so much happening in our life at the time. It was just like, whoo, wow. <laughs> um, at the same time, I suppose um, I've always had that thing that there's going to be a day when Maharaj calls us or every single person gets an opportunity to get closer to Maharaj, whichever mm -hmm. journey they're on, whether they're Gursik or not Gursik, there's always a point in your life when Maharaj will reach out to you and say, right. I'm you an opportunity, are you willing to take it and come one step closer to me? And in that case, then Maharaj will take a thousand steps towards you, Hannah. Mm -hmm. The first thing we did was uh, we took a hukam nama from Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj because that's we've always done that. Even when I want to take Amrit, ask Maharaj, Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, Maharaj, um, I want to take Amrit, is it your Agya? And the Maharaj gave a hukam fit to him. It was so amazing. But, um, and the hukam nama we got was Harang Lage Pahagye Vile Sant Piyariya. So in it, it says that you'll get colored in the uh, love of the Lord. All your paps, all, you know, the accumulation of just living in comforts and just, you know, just being lazy or whatever we, however we spent our life, um, all that accumulation will just run away from you by meeting with the saints, the Piyari saints. And then we were just like, why? 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 Right, no. So Maharaj like stamped it for us, Guru Sahib did. But it's really interesting because um, I know sometimes like people might struggle with thinking about how is, um, how do we interpret the hukam nama, Anna? Like, do we just interpret it how it makes sense to us? I mean, that might make mm -hmm. sense to you, but it might not. So in that case, it, um, there were still some other signs from Vaiguru or the universe, if that's what you believe in or connect with, that mm -hmm. made it feel for us. Because it was such a, I think we had about two or three months to kind of decision and pack, pack up our jobs, pack up everything. Yeah. It's so interesting because I was uh, reading this excerpt from a book called The Soul Compass. And these uh, researchers went around the world and they interviewed like priests, rabbis, Sufis, Christian mystics, sages, gurus, um, intuitives. And they found, it's so interesting, they found that the way to know you're uh, mm -hmm. living in divine spiritual guidance, like Guru's Hukam, we say the Hukam, right? they said it usually feels, not always, but it usually 90% of the time feels natural, efficient, easeful, peaceful, and graceful. And I couldn't think of a better way to describe our journey. Mm. Like, it went so fast, but um, like our furniture sold so quickly. And everyone we were coming into contact yeah, I remember that. Everyone we were coming in yeah. were not even Sikh, not even in our Sangha. Yeah. There were Italians, there was a Moroccan family that took my daughter's bed. And they were like, oh, so why are you selling it for? And we were like, oh, we're moving to India to uh, take part in some social upliftment projects. And they were just like, wow, Allah, this is such a blessing. And oh, they were wow. in God's name. And um, we were just like, wow, that's beautiful. We're getting a CISA mm -hmm. from um, members of different communities, you know? And then I think the thing that really like amazed us, one of the things that fall into this category was our landlord had said to us, when we said to him, we want to um, change our agreement and uh, finish it early. There's usually a contractual agreement that you'll pay for mm -hmm. to vacate the pro property. And um, so he came round on the last day to check our property. Um, and he said, um, you know, he checked it all and he was like, uh, so where are you going? What's happened? Why are, you, why are you leaving so soon? And we said, oh, we're going to India to for well, the rest of our lives uh, because we explained about Punjab and stuff. And he just went, wow. And he just said, oh, my God, it's like Allah has created this and made it all happen. That is oh, wow. And he did not seem like 
could just pass and it was so like we'd been talking obviously for uh, about eight months beforehand yeah and, and not even a mention of god let alone remembering god and praising god and then uh, what he ended up doing, he was so like taken back that he let us off those two months. He said, I'm not going to charge you that two month um, rent um, extra. And on top of it, it was cute because we had some sun at the house and the little son had um, put the iron on by mistake and it had made an iron mark on the floor. And he was like, no, 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 I'm not even going to charge you for that. Don't even worry about it. And <laughs> it kept happening up until we went and uh, got to the airport and uh, the Sangat came, you guys came, our families, families from America, and it was such a beautiful send off. We couldn't ask for anything more. Just mathatic to all of you who are up. And um, when we got to the security side, after we left you guys, they, uh, the, there was two guys, there was one Italian and there was one uh, British lady. And they said, what's happening? Who are these people? Um, you guys just look so beautiful like look at your oh, wow. wherever we went from that moment on from saying yes we'll go there was just compliments about the culture uh, praises of god it was so so inspiring it was just like why go why go why go and, and, um, so i think that's how it happened and it went so quickly but obviously yeah um and I remember seeing you guys when we had the like all the sangats came to the airport and when you walked, you know when you walked past the barriers to go into security and we were all watching and seeing all five of you go, it you know how you're saying natural, it just seemed like the most natural place for right. all of you to go. It, it was just it just seemed so natural and befitting for the whole family. But it's so weird because you think as a parent, you think as a wife, you think as mm -hmm. yeah. an employee as a you know you think your life is heading in one direction and, you, and then suddenly it goes into a different direction. And then, you know, obviously one of the first things we did was ask our children, and, um, do you want to go? And, you know, we've been asked. And obviously we kind of hope, had the hope that, like, for example, when our kids were one year, um, my uh, middle one, he was one year old, and my uh, eldest one, he was four years old, so they have a birthday on the same day. So we did a double account part for them. And I remember myself and my husband talking, and we were like, what shall we do for the Azaz? And I, what do we want for our children? And then he was like, we want Sikhi Siddhak. We want Sikhi Siddhak for ourselves and our children. And that's the greatest gift that that's anyone can And um, then um, we did that account part, it was a double account part with the Azaz. And this is the greatness of Maharaj. It's not the, never the individual, ever, Hannah. Um, it's the greatness of Maharaj that what they, whatever they listen to, they mm -hmm. listen to each and everyone's prayers, even if you don't know the value of what you're praying for. <laughs> I, I knew that what it would mean going like this or the start of a journey. And uh, that day when we told the kids, I mean, my little one, uh, she was eight at the time, I think, and she just turn around and she's been saying for three years or so prior to that <laughs> but I want to live in, live in India and she just turned around she said all my life is complete and she's just on cloud nine here she has been for the last nine months or so um my eldest one was like oh wow it's a change you know but um I'm going to miss everyone who's very close to the family and stuff and he just said look this is the purpose of life though isn't it and he's the one now he's loving it so much he's like I don't even need to go back He's like, I love my life so much here. Uh, in my middle yeah. Was like, yeah. So, um, but the most amazing thing is that there's a Saki from Guru Hargobind Sahib, the sixth Guru's time. And during that time, there was a Sikh that they wanted to go and do Parjar, which is like go to different areas and preach about Sikhi to them. And that Sikh had a doubt. He was like, well, if I go, what will happen to my family behind? They'll starve. They won't be able to cope. You know, who's going to feed them? Who's going to earn for them and stuff? And um, Maharaj, uh, so in that way, they had doubts. They couldn't, put, you know, make themselves go and do that prachar, come that bhajan. And Guru Hargobi Sahaja Maharaj, so clever, the way they teach everyone. Uh, they said, okay, fine. So they wrote a letter. They said to that Gursik, who I think is by um, Nahaluji, I might be wrong. And they said to Bainahaluji, they said, take this to another Gursik who lives quite far away. 
And um, so that Fai Saab listened and he went. He took the letter to that Gursik who lived in a different area. And when the Gursik opened the letter and read it, in it, it said, the Gursik who has brought you this letter, you got to keep them hostage for a month or so. You cannot let them come back. It was either a month or a year or something like that. It was a long period of time. Don't let them leave. This is my hukum. And um, so the Gursik obviously acted like He kept that same hostage. He seeks hostage. He's like, you can't go anywhere. And obviously that Sikh was like, oh my God, what's going to happen to my family? Oh my God. Anyway, the time passed. And um, what happened was after a certain period of time, Bhai Nahaluji was um, allowed to go back home to see his family. And on his way back, he was just thinking, oh, my family, what would have happened to them? Full of doubts and worries and concerns. And um, by the time he got to his street, where his old house was, which was like an old mud hut kind of thing, it turned into a beautiful mare, like a beautiful house. And when he went in, he saw his wife, he saw his children were really well. They're looking happy, they're playing, they're getting on with life. And he went in and he was shocked. He goes, what happened? And they turned around to him and they said, wow, well, while you were gone, Guru Sangat uh, used to come in and they realized that we didn't have atta, we didn't have dal, we didn't have sabjiya, we didn't have our uh, ba basics that we needed. And they said that while you were gone, they would provide us with this every day. Then they started renovating our house. And the most funniest thing for us, the most touching, humbling thing is when we'd FaceTime home, uh, to my in-laws, because one of our concerns was, what about our parents? Um, my in-laws, I lived with them for 14 years, and they're in their uh, late 60s to 70s. What about them? What about my mum? She's by herself, and she's um, in her 60s as well. And our um, concern was like, is it right to leave parents at that age? Anna? And normally, no, it isn't. Anna. You always look after your parents. But because this was coming from Guru Sahib, that we want you to, they were showing us that we can look after, just like 400 years ago, we looked after the <laughs> This day, we still do that, and we will do that in the future as well. And right. uh, at the time, there'd be certain gosiks um, at my mother-in-law's house, painting the walls, moving the furniture, um, fixing things, and we were just like, what is happening? <laughs> they are from the sun with any mercy, and not beyond from the sun with they were doing so much seva that whenever my um, in-laws or even my mum in London, uh, this like, Gurjeevan Singh, um, Biraj Singh, um, Harminder Panji, any time she needed anything, whether it was like a shower that uh, she needed replacing, a computer to set up, they would be there like a shot on her birthday to give her flowers. Isn't the Khalsa the most beautiful book that mm -hmm. The kind of a worldly son or daughter, myself or my husband, could be to my in-laws or my mum. We don't even come close to the kind of biar that the son of You know, like, it just goes to show why did Guru Gobi Singh Ji Maharaj tell Mata Sundar Koji and Mata Saib Koji when they were uh, uh, Siri Dandama Saib and they said, that, you know what, okay, our children who are the most you can't top the sides out of They were perfect in every gone. And there's no one as beautiful as the Jara sides are they, right? But fear we, Maharaj Nikya, that they still, doesn't matter if they've gone, we've got thousands of miles out right. And that's exactly what we're witnessing in our life, day in, day out, that look at Maharaj's love. That's when you know you're in Hukam. That's when you know, when you see these things happening in your life, there's just, is Guru Sahib's Vidyai is the Vidyai of the Sangat that, you know, Maharaj works through them. It's, it's right. just so beautiful. But um, I suppose living in uh, UK, we, over the years, we like, how many talks did we listen to? We listened to so many talks. We did listen to so many kathas. We were learning, 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 or trying to improve ourselves. Um, we're trying to teach our kids, our family. We we're teaching others in camps and stuff. And so it's like we spent, what, 15, 20 years almost gathering all this kind of knowledge and theory. But at the same time, we were living in the comforts. So it was like 
we were learning, learning, learning. And the way I kind of view it now is that in the UK, it's a really beautiful place to do seva, but it's still to some extent, it's like you're not tested. You gain the theory, but here is like, it's, it's not easy. So you kind of get a true reflection of yourself. That's what I feel of myself. Mm. Like, I remember 2006 when um, I started Santhya with Madhuji, who's like a Dandami Taksali star, such a beautiful soul. And he, he explained to me, he was like, UK is like Bo Bumi. And what that means is that in UK, you kind of have um, all your comforts. So basically anything you've done good in your previous lives, you are getting the receiving end of that. You've got like, you know, so many types of food on your plate. Everything is on your plate. It's just so easy. You've got heating, electricity, access to Wi-Fi. Everything's there. Anna. Whereas in India, they say India is Karam Bumi. And uh, that's the land of creating your action. So you're basically starting, you're creating your action. Anna. So right. in, in India, I felt like we've got that opportunity to apply practically what we've learned. And mm. trust me, I'm the first to say what we've learned, what we think we're like, and what we're actually like, we're nothing, Anna. It's really right. cool. the families that are here, they are next level, they're amazing, we're lucky to have them. But, um, you know, like Santhorg, for example, we've learned, or we're still learning how to have very simple food. Like sometimes we might not get um, delivery of milk. And milk we need so much because we're making the muck and the butter out now from scratch. We're making gear out of it, making um, day out of it, we give it to the kids and the and it's like just learning to be happy with that, you know, rather than getting everything. And it was like so cute just the other day. It was so, it's so hot here at the moment. And um, we didn't have water guns. Usually you just run to Tesco, right? You just go and um, get some water guns and whatever, order it off Amazon and it'll come to you. And um, we've had, the kids have had to be really creative and uh, try and, you know, find those answers themselves. And what they did, they got, you know, little cow pole syringes. <laughs> <laughs> I do a water fight. No problem. Look what I've got. And they pull out. Oh, that is so cute. And I was like, well, that's what Maraj wants. And that is that can do, can do kind of. Yeah. But we're still so far. Um, we've got a long way to learn yet, Hannah. Uh, but my thoughts, when I came here, my perspective did change a bit. And I was like, you know, sometimes like thinking about myself, because I'm, I'm talking about only from my perspective, Hannah. Sometimes in UK, we tend to get depressed or anxiety or other mental health kind of related um, illnesses, Hannah. And sometimes I was just thinking that uh, here, we're just trying to like survive, survive into our seva. There's no other like, you know, what we're gonna do. What, there's no other thoughts really, Hannah. And um, then I thought, I was like, I think in UK, we were living for ourselves, myself and my, our family. And when I think about how much were we giving out to, into the world compared to how much we're taking from the world, universe, like all its resources, that like I can say for a fact that I'm sure our carbon footprint would um, de you know, decrease coming here, be not by choice, not because we're good people or anything like that, but because of the access to it. So it's like, it's just made you kind of appreciate, um, mm. you know, that sometimes in UK, we're not so sure about what kind of garam we're creating. And that can lead to depression because the opportunity is not there to like take less, but give more back unless you really, really go and, you know, find it from somewhere. Hmm. But I think when you were all in the UK, you know, you, you're talking about, you know, you spent like 20 years learning, but you all, you all spent so many years. Like I, everyone knows that like, you was up and down the country for like talks and Gurdwara bookings and camps. And I think, you know, all that, all that, you know, that seva, all that giving you you did as a family, even the children, like they're going up and down the country with you, all that giving. And I think that's why it just seems so natural that Guru Sahib would want to take you to India for that next step of seva, where you can really like, you know, you can do so much and completely flourish. But it's always the people who are behind the scenes that are the most special. Right? The ones that are front are like, just, they're just like Kapare really is the soul behind it. They're the people that do the hard work. Mm. And it's just that Maharaj had Daya on us and brought us there. Huh? There's no, nothing else you can say. I suppose um, 
one of my favorite Pantia of um, Gurbani when I first came into Sikhi was Jodo Prayam Kalanka Chao. And uh, that means that if you want to play the game of love with me, then come to me with your head on the palm of your hand. So basically, just be ready to sacrifice. I love that Pangti so much, but God, it is Kanyotiki Walo Niki. It is. Thank you. It is. Like, you look at the Sakya of, like, by Manji, by Mani Singh, who gave up their whole family for Sikhi. Right, no. What Guru Sahib's asking, not even. They still, they, they brought us here, and the comforts compared to England are not on the same level, Hannah, because obviously the country is still a developing country. But what they've given us here is just still, like I remember one day I was sitting with Mahabush, Dr. Babaji, and I was like, are we actually worthy to receive anything? Like, are we actually worthy to take anything from Maharaj? And I was like, it's true. You're right, so what have we actually done to like even receive even one burki from Maharajana? Right, and then um, like how the Gursiks from the past used to earn Gursiki by Manjji, by Mani Singhji and beyond the, beyond the Gursiks and they literally gave their heads. Can't we just do this little small thing? It's nothing. Right, bro. And um, I suppose um, obviously one of the pulling factors for us to come here was that um, having the Sangat of Mahapurushana, Nam, Jamadu, Seva, Ganwali, the people who live completely selflessly, I think that was a massive thing. Because if I've learned anything in my life, um, in 2002, like I mentioned before, I met Baba Thakas Singh Ji, and in 2004, just um, as myself and Singh said, we were going to get married, I remember thinking about um, how, wow, if I have a child, I'd love them to do Mahapurusha Seva, like Baba Tak Singh Ji and stuff. Right? But then just as, um, just after our marriage, they, uh, we got married in September. In December, we got the phone call that they'd left their cities. And we were absolutely crushed. Because when you meet a true Mahapurusha, it's like your life just takes a different route altogether. It just goes in places that you, the doors were closed before. Right? But, and you obviously you get checked. It's like you've got a personal mentor who just like is checking your ego constantly. And that's what we need at the end of the day, Hannah. Like, so when, when they left their city, we were just so crushed. And then that day we did Nithnam and took a Hukam Nama, uh, looked at the Saki that was related to that Hukam Nama, the background of it. And in it, it said that any time you spend with Mahapush is like, priceless because it can mean that when you die you leave your body uh the dharmraj will ask what uh, would you like the fall of the reward of first all the bath you've done in your life or all the good things you've done in your life and in that saki a marbush was explaining to the the uh, person that was going to pass away soon they said you're going to pass away but when you do pass away don't regret that you didn't spend your lifetime with marbush and stuff say this answer instead and he advised that uh, person he was a trader as a living uh, for his uh, occupation. And he said, when you go to Dharamraj and you away, say, I want the reward for spending. And they had only spent like about half an hour talking about God for the first and only time of his life with this Mahapush and say, you want uh, the reward of spending time with the Mahapush talking about God. And um, he said, Tika. And that what the Mahapush had predicted that happened, the he passed away, his soul went to Dharamraj, and um, as, as predicted, he, he was asked, you know, what do you want the reward of first? All the barb you've done in your life, all the times you've remembered God um, and done good. And he said, give me the reward for the good. And what they did, they took him to straight to Sachkhand. And when that soul got to Sachkhand, the trader got to Sachkhand, he walked in and the Jamduts, the messengers of death that were taking them, it was by Ibaran Manji Hanji, when um, the Jamduts were taking them, they could not step into such kind. They had to drop him there to get sort of that half an hour's worth of reward for being in uh, such kind. Huh? And so they waited outside. And when that, gusit, when that trader came and sat down, he went into such kind. And who did he see next to him? By Beranaji, the Mahapush that he'd spent that 30 minutes with him. He saw him and he was just like, wow, 
everything that you said was going to happen has happened mm -hmm. like beautiful the place of my guru the place of truth the realm of truth and you're sitting here as well and um it was so amazing and by parana ji just turned to him and said hon koi fikr na kar don't worry about anything like right. back and cut the jam dudes he said na ho na tu na chute nikht na jai ho dud that now even the jam dudes can't come in here like no one can take you from here you just stay in satkhand so that sakhi was from that date of the hukum nam we took him by um but but taxing you uh, left the city because we were so regretting we didn't get to spend the time with them that one to you know but then in um so that stayed with me for life since 2004 and then we got to meet baba ji singh hansali wali coming to india quite a few times wah guru what can i say about them okay. there's just no words but they're very very pratak and uh, very very powerful brahmgani mahapurush and um knowing when they left their city as well like we'd rush back to um, india whenever we could but when they left their city in 2015 first of january it was like a real wake up call hana right? that this life is such a precious precious gem it's just such a huge huge thing hana right? and um spend as much time in sad sangat in sant sangat in the correct sangat the people who remind you of god hana right? who are living qualities of god spend as much time as you can with them and to be here today i know that every single day marz ke parana i get darshan of mahapush what more could right. i mm. mean i remember like when i was doing balak desh which is santhya and um, you know knows of course six in the uk do santhya and in balak desh which is like the what you learn from ura ara iri and near the end there's something called amolak button which means priceless button from sanskrit button singh ji and uh, they said that the re the reward for doing seva or simran for 1000 lifetimes the reward of that if you do seva and simran under instruction of uh, saintly souls or mahapush you get the whole reward of one janam like how look where you thousand in your own kind of like where you are the way you think you'll get that whole fall of 1000 janam seva simran in one janam like so but they advise in there that you uh, should never do hankar because if you start doing hankar of it when your kamai gets destroyed it's not it just goes to waste you know so in it it also says whoever listens to saints and uh, does seva and simran and sangat with them they get 1000 times more fall so obviously these were big things that one can you know learn so much in this environment and um, never take anyone for granted not even your family members i've learned that as well hana coming here but especially those uh, souls that are joining you to waigu spend as much time as possible with them because once they're gone they're gone there's no point repenting or regretting hana mm -hmm. so um i think that was a massive pulling factor but there's one thing that um i think as people from uk or the west we do anyway we um come to india and really enjoy yatras and i really recommend people bring their kids you know from a young age or whatever um they come here and they enjoy yatras they show itihasik asthans and it is beautiful living in guru sahib starti is incredible you know it really makes you appreciate what guru sahib went to uh, i remember when i first started hating machhar hair coming out like, oh my god they annoy me so much and like <laughs> like two o'clock in the evening getting them out the room and but then I sat down one day and I was like oh my god when Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj was in Machiwara jungle by Charles Lyne they must have had snakes and machar and all sorts but the Gursikhs were living in forests they weren't bothered by this mm -hmm. but how like we brought up so mollycoddled aren't we like so much yeah content. yeah and what I have found is what well, have fun you know that feeling when you go to a camp residential camp in uk like seek to inspire camp boss camp or your first one of my first camp was kaza camp when i went there i felt like i was in kaza raj it was such a buzzing feeling i was like completely on cloud nine such kind of my first few experiences and um so here it feels like you're kind of at a camp but you're here 
24 seven, but that feeling doesn't go. And uh, the weird thing is like, when you used to go back in your own life, have a camp, you go in the camp and stuff. When you go back onto your own life, your uni or college or your work, you feel really flat and like mm -hmm. a buzzing feeling back. Just because on your, you're here in Guru Sahib's uh, Dati, what you do get, it feels like you're doing a double nitnem. It feels like your nitnem has been done for you before you've even done it. And then you do your own. It's that kind of feeling. And the only reason for that I can figure out is because we are surrounded by places of immense bhakti. There's, right. so much, there's jugs there's and thousands of years of bhakti being done um, on this you know, part of the world. And there still is. It's still going right. on. Mm. And, um, you know, just going to historical istans, uh, going to see Vastuwa, like Maharaj's belongings. When we saw Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's Jore, oh my God. Think of it like when, you're, um, when you have someone pass away in your family or your friend that you're really close to, right? And, you know, one day you just happen to come across something that belongs to them. Maybe it's a, um, a koti that they used to wear, like this your dad and they passed away and you've got a goti, you know? and you just get the sentimental feeling of connection with them you know? this is mm -hmm. how guru, uh, guru pitaji and we're seeing they're like they vastava from that long ago you know? and um, to see the jore was like oh, it was just i can't explain it. it was so humbling to be able to with your eyes to see that you know? and then i think that the one thing that brought me to complete tears is we went to Bhai Rupa's Ji, and that family is known from Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji's time up until um, beyond Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's to present day. They um, had got so many belongings from different Guru Sahib, so many blessings for Kumnaman. But one thing they did have is they had a dal, a shield from Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj, and it was worn by Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj during the Battle of Jamgar, where they lost their okay. Benji, it had a bullet, a bullet mark in the tile that they wore in the battle. I, oh God, I God. It shivers down my spine now as I speak. I just, you can't get over it. And these constant reminders, these constant connections, and now your faith it just gets rejuvenated again and again. Right. It's just, you know, learning from Parat and Gursik, this lineage of Gursik who did Seva with Sharda Pavna and that's what we're seeing here. That's what we're learning here. Sharda Pavna is the key, you know? which means mm -hmm. faith, devotion, loving devotion. Because unfortunately, what's coming out is a lot of uh, cynicism, skepticism within the Pantho. You don't need to go there. You don't need to do this. There's no need to nam jab. There's no need. Oh, there's no need, no need of all of that. You know? But when mm -hmm. you go to historical places, it's, it's something else. You know? um, and then obviously that's rubbing off onto the youngsters. We say kids are our group and um, they're like God's image because they're much more innocent. Huh? And seeing like my own kids going there and, you know, taking the blessings and then being inspired to start their little Nihal Kirtani Jatha. They're only little primary kids. Huh? Yeah. And Maharaj has already got them learning such beautiful ragri then. We hear them daily practicing with each other, and we're just like, oh, yeah. Guru. I remember being my kid being like uh, two and two and four years old, and I said, I hope one day when you grow up, you'll sing like Bhai Sathwinder Singh or the, you know the great Kirtanis who sing in yeah. the I remember saying that to them when they were little, and now Maharaj is bringing it to life through their own. Yeah. And if anyone who's watching now, Nahal Keith, and just did like. Um, did a two to three week three week tour in December time. So all the um, recordings are on YouTube. We'll share it on the Musket page as well. They are so sweet and so amazing. Young they, children. They they just enjoy it so much. And you know they went to Bangla side, that historical Godwara. Yeah, yeah. Just so lucky and grateful that they're a part of that. That that is a part of their life now. Whereas mm. in England, there's so much far through like distractions all the time. I remember they were on their Wii or their um, YouTube or, you know, stuff all the time. They were busy, you know, like going to the park, just just playing football or something. But all that kind of exposure to Gosiki and Sharda yeah. just having such a beautiful effect on them and they're developing such a growth mindset as well. So um, 
our journey has, you know, it's been full of like, it's been a journey and it's going to continue being a journey. And honest to God, it, the funny, you know, the, the thing that we feel is we're thousands of miles away from home, but we feel so close to Sangat and family like we've never before. We feel so close to everything. We feel love from everyone. Mm-hmm. And all Guru Sahib's would, yeah, you know? And um, the kids feel the same. So it's, we couldn't ask for anything more. So um, all we ask for, I suppose we, we've only got a few 10 minutes or so left, um, is that I just wanted to mention about some of the Sevama that we're doing as well. And um, one thing we wanted to mention is that I think with Punjab, yes, please, if you ever free and you ever find that you've got the time or opportunity and even make the time, don't even you know, expect it to happen. But um, if you ever have that feeling that I want to come to Punjab and do Seva, definitely do. And we recommend that you spend, you know, at least as much time as possible because what we noticed is, and this is what Baba just said to us about moving rather than just coming for your six week summer holidays at school. What we notice is that you have to live amongst the locals to really make an impact, make a difference. And like there was one um, Benji that came, Lucinda Kaur, who was on the Monday's edition of Insta Live. She came here and she just won the hearts of all the kids. Mm-hmm. She um, gelled in with them so beautifully. She'd ask how they were, she'd have a laugh with them. And the effect that she had just doing that every day gave them so much bear, huh? is that before they used to come um, to the Gurdwara in just normal English kapre track suits and stuff, just a chunni or whatever, but just having that interaction with her every day, uh, they'd ended up coming in a bana and um, they'd end up like wanting to learn how to wear the star. And like when they saw Nihal Kirtan, he just had starting their Kirtan on stages. Uh, they started learning Kirtan and they performed at a Balsi program and they were brilliant. And it's just like... Yeah that they're getting from people living the little little interaction that's what makes it yeah there's one um bend that we used to go to before the lockdown and we'll continue after the lockdown called Gulthri, which is known as that kind of um jitta Gulthri, like the heroin addict it was known for being, every member of each family was known for being addicted to heroin and um Maharaj, like sent us there to do a weekly camp sikhi camp you know? and we went there for the first day and the first Saturday and then the following Saturday was first Saturday was four kids, second Saturday was six kids. And then just before the lockdown, there were 60 kids that used to turn up and partake in the sports and the Sikhi learning activity. And um, it was just living amongst them. So we do recommend highly that the reason a lot of people are going to shares in like the cities from outside the charities and stuff, they tend to hit the cities a lot. And if mm-hmm. they the villages, they tend to just go, go in for a day or so and then come out again. But building that rapport, gaining trust, it takes time. Yeah, it, yeah. it does, yeah. I mean, the, the backdrop of Punjab of at least 30 or so years has been mistrust, and, uh, and we need to create that trust. So whoever is going to come out, come out and spend that time because it's so worth it, it's so rewarding. So, and um, like you've had sung at the visit you um, guys as well. Yeah. So, um, so yes, definitely come and visit us. Yeah, visit. <laughs> much. We love it. Um, and um, please, 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 whenever you can, come and give us darshan and um, keep blessing the uh, projects that are happening. We've got female empowerment project. We were just having mm-hmm. earlier about how we can bring more hygiene and sanitation to females in the bins. We've got um, Motherhood, the movie that's going to come out this year, Marriage Get and um, you know the Lunga Seva that's going on. Yeah. Lockdown. There's so much happening, um, but still, it's all happening with your support, with your sisana. And um, however, whenever you can come, please come and bless us. There's just one think, thing. Sorry, Ben, carry on. No, sorry. There was just one thing that um, one Sikhya that I read somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but. Um, it wrote on there that to accelerate your spiritual progression. So if you've got a desire to accelerate spiritually, and it says you, if you do this, you'll accelerate by up to 80%, right? It said, do what needs to be done rather than what you like or dislike doing. So that's <laughs> a far-fetched gal, gal, huh? 
But I mean, right. for the people like us, we felt like we were learning, 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 but not really doing much. And now it's like, well, you know, I don't like the climate, but it needs to be done. Or I don't like the climate. Right. And um, so that's just the last piece of right. it. And I've heard Dr. Um, Baba Gurren Dixon, you say um, a very similar thing. Like you said, um, I remember them saying, do seva outside of your comfort zone. Yes. They said that to us countless times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm talking to you all. Thank you all so much um, yeah. for your comments and your love. Please forgive me. I'm sure I've made so many mistakes uh, trying to explain. It's stuff. been lovely. It's been so inspiring. Why do you? It's, it's yeah. you the ones that inspire us. You're the white guys that give us the good, like, uh, well wishes and the energy and, you know, inspire us to keep doing what we're doing. Anna. It's the which Sangat Har Prabha said you. So it's the Sangat that are blessing us and being part of our journey. And you guys are going to take us even more further because we're, we're just like on this bit, but I'm sure when you guys start coming out, then we're going to learn how to do Seva properly. Right, and like um, viewers who want to keep updated with Benji's journey, Benji's got a YouTube channel, so you can subscribe and follow. Like Benji's quite regular vlogs. Um, yeah. if it, it was just a way to like show, because sometimes what we think of India is not always the case. So it's just to yeah. kind of, a different light of India and obviously our journey so obviously if there's anything that people want to learn and want to know more about then feel free to get in touch and we'll try and do a vlog on that something a bit educational and fun I suppose Ah, I think it's we're been... running yeah out. I think we've only got a few minutes like maybe three minutes left I think but I think this is it's just been such a nice live and I know what people are going to ask afterwards is can Sabine Benji come back on <laughs> 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 uh, loving all the life. I love the Naj one uh, on Monday. That was so inspiring. The Raj it was. And good even seeing the week before that with Lucy. Lucy and amazing. So amazing to see them and such passionate Gorsiks. I love the, uh, um, the uh, what do you call it, the quiz yesterday. That was hilarious. It was brilliant. It felt like it was we were so good. families and just enjoying before the lockdown. So, yeah. Um, are doing a fantastic job and keep it up connecting everyone and uh, keep blessing us on this journey and uh, a huge fatir to all the sangat um please pass on our love to everyone so we'll say our fatir now and as benji wants to say anything else so thank you so much thank you so much it's been it's just been a really inspirational life right san guru nanak right okay. Okay, thank you. Bye, Krishika Khasa. Bye, Krishiki Fatishi.